Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the Exit Only Theater Podcast. I'm JP Lee and with me as always The is Evil One, Adrian Alderette. I was always afraid to look over and see what he's doing because I never look before I start shooting. Um, we're actually going to do a quick review of, of The Witch. We just got out of theaters to see it, so um, let's start. We went to watch The Witch. We did. It, yes. It, so it was about... 35 minutes ago? Yeah, it's pretty fresh. And I want to note, uh, and you brought you brought up a good point that this is, since we started this podcast, I would say, mm -hmm. because we started this podcast after Ex Machina. Like, I was way after that. Yeah, the first film we reviewed was Jurassic World. Yeah, and this is the first movie that I've seen since that that I've really... Since Ex Machina, not Since Ex Machina, World. yeah. Since Ox... <laughs> since I know where Jurassic you're going. World, I know where you're going. Where I was like, why is she wearing like, the heels? This is so complex. No, like, I just... It's the first movie that I've actually felt intellectually challenged by. Mm -hmm. Not because I couldn't... I can't... I, I didn't understand something or whatnot, but like as a film as a whole, like there's a lot of questions in there, and I like that. Yeah, I think I think it would be worth it to, to break down like what what's happening in this movie, because I feel like the the marketing of it was a little vague which was good but yeah. at the same time it showed a lot which i think led people to assuming it was just a straightforward horror movie yeah. which it's not which is the same thing happened with the gift it's the same thing that's happened with what was the other one we talked about earlier uh a crimson peak was very crimson similar peak, yeah. which is a good movie but it's not a horror film yeah so i feel like if if we just just a kind of a tweet's worth of what the hell this movie was about mm -hmm. set in the 17th century mm -hmm. puritan culture is at the, the core of this film a family's basically been run out of town for yeah. whatever reason yeah and now there's a family of seven, if you count the infant. Yeah, there was a ton of them. A family of seven who's now sitting at the at the edge of this wooded area with like no way to feed themselves, no way to to survive essentially. Yeah. And I feel like that's also part of the discussion of like, is it is it sort of uh, it's definitely to me I think it's a perfect snapshot of what that culture was like. Yeah. Um, not just because of you know how rough and how hard it was to live back then, but just how because it's rough and hard to live back then there must be a reason for it, so they're witches. Like, they're, yeah. like we just blame supernatural things. Like, it's just such, such a weird environment to be around. Yeah. And I'm really glad that I'm in this century. Yeah. I, it's a cautionary tale. Likewise, too. man. Yeah, like, the like the poor kid, like, it wasn't, a, like, uh, the, the son, I forget his name. Caleb. Caleb, yeah, mm -hmm. where poor guy had, you know, obviously, I, I feel uncomfortable. This is the one part I pointed out of the movie, but, like, the poor kid didn't have <laughs> any other in. women around him besides his mom and his sister. Yeah. So, like, when he's... He's hitting puberty. It's like the only girl that he has to really be that's in his age range is his sister. And the, the way they show that in the film is there's just little, very subtle, tasteful for what the yeah, topic it was very is. Tasteful, yeah. Moments of him kind of looking at his sister and seeing like a, a shot of what he's seeing, which is a very like wide shot of just like her chest area. Yeah. And it's just. And it wasn't been like she was trying, like she was wearing something promiscuous no, by not any at all. means. No, yeah. no, definitely within the period. It was just. It's definitely, it, it hints to the fact that, like you said earlier, yeah. that every character may have at some point sinned yeah. or been tempted to sin in some way, and that might feed into what happens. Sin to is definitely the, the I, in my, in my, my opinion, looking at it now, is the one thing that really moves the plot forward. Yeah. Yeah. Because in the beginning, when the infant son is taken away, the one thing that's brought up later is like, oh, our son is our son is dead, and he's going to hell because we didn't baptize him. And right. for those of you that are not Catholic, or I don't know if it's the same for Christi uh, for Christians or anything like that, I'm not really knowledgeable about that stuff. But if you aren't baptized, you technically still wear the original sin tag until you get baptized. Right. So you're born. Yeah. You're born sin. sinners. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I. It was really. It was fascinating to see. Every character's kind of flaw when it came to that, because they're saying that they were really religious mm -hmm. is an understatement. Yeah, they kind of are religious in the way that they're almost at, like they're trying to repent for something that they've done. They're, const um, they're, 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 yeah, they're constantly, they're constantly apologizing for stuff. They're and... praying before they like eat, and not just mm -hmm. oh, let's bless this meal. They're like, good God. Please bless us and please, and they start off by saying, yeah. please forgive us for whatever we've done today. Yeah, they don't even know if they've done something wrong, but they're just like, just in case. Yeah, and it's, it was, sad life. that was actually, you think about it now, it was actually more, to, like, to, you look at it now, in our generation, it was more disturbing watching them pray. 
than watching them really go through the hell that they were going and through. I think I think to, to work off of that is it's not necessarily like the fact that they were religious. Yeah. It's just the fact that there there was so much misunderstanding of their own world and that's terrifying because nowadays, I mean, we have so much technology that's that I mean, Sean's walking around with a GoPro the size of you know, some large stamps and he's shooting H D video. Like that would be witchcraft to anyone yeah. ten years ago. Little you know what I mean? Like so I think I think it's just the fact that there's this unknown vibe that people had back then that forced them to do things that that in turn made religion look really yeah. scary because it's it's they they acted on behalf of religion yeah. but it was their own fear you know so yeah and going for the title itself there mm -hmm. is definitely witches in the background like that is that mm -hmm. is a fact mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily like a villain like let's say that that's obvious they're not, it's very much uh, it's very much like a movie and he, the director Robert Eggers, really takes a lot of cues from Kubrick, and it feels and like the from The Shining, and mm -hmm. even uh, he takes a lot of inspiration, at least from uh, the music that he uses mm -hmm. uh, from 2001: Space Odyssey, when the monolith uh, appears. There's like the the crazy chords, like oh yeah, he does it in The Shining too. Yeah, he has a lot of yeah. There's a lot of disembodied voices that are yeah. kind of freaking everybody out. And so and there's no real clarity as to like what what the motivation for the witches are or mm -hmm. anything. It just it, it seems as if they're just pure evil. Yeah, and I like that you're saying there's there's more than one. Yeah, because that was that was the immediate reaction I had out, out of the film was how how many how many evil beings were there in this movie and like the the coda that sean i i, I don't know if you wanted to talk about it at all because i i would i would love for you to reenact the facial expression you had when we got out of the theater because it basically sums up how we, how we all thought when we when we first saw now he's gonna be giggling the whole time but literally like we all just were like what did we just see and yeah. and that's because of the last like 30 seconds of the movie was just like there's clearly more than one yeah. so that that justifies the the goat thing, we, I I don't oh, know how man. much spoilers we're gonna. Give I say this, go. Uh, this is the thing. I go watch it. Go with it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Go watch it. But we're about to spoil like uh, a, like the end of the movie. Yes. Now we are exactly. Uh, and I. I don't even know how to like explain like so when I first saw that this movie was coming out the only thing I knew about it was the title, and there was the W. This is sound, this is sound ridiculous but this is us being stream of consciousness. Remember it was forty minutes ago we saw the movie. Yeah. The W was two v's not touching and i couldn't i don't still have no idea what that means but there has right. to be a reason for it i'll probably look it up afterwards because like right. i i believe me i obviously a week from now we're gonna take yeah. away certain things from this movie and be like oh that's that's definitely what that i think that meant and i i think there's something there's there has to be this is my like theory because yeah. i still i still have no idea if i if this is even close yeah but like there it's the like that duality of of good versus bad Religious versus non-religious, mm -hmm. right versus wrong. There are twins in the movie, fraternal twins, that help sell it visually. Yeah. There's literally like a line demarcating the woods from their farm. Yeah. There's a lot of just there's a white goat and a black goat, and one is more important than one is more important than the other. The plot. There's just a lot of like this and that, this and that, and at the end of the movie, you almost feel like the the main character, the Thomason character, which is also a really it's a cool, girl, random yeah. girl name. Yeah. Um. She's. I don't know which line she ended on. Yeah. And I. Oh no! I know which line. She, I know where she clearly ended, but I don't know where she started. And that's kind of cool. It's it's ambiguous that you're like. Because the movie opens did she up do with a her. Lot of this stuff? Like, yeah. I don't know. The movie opens up on her face. Yeah. And we assume that we're watching the movie from her perspective. Or from a protagonist's perspective. Yeah. And it really, it, technically, we're really not. Yeah. It's kind of. Uh, and I'm throwing back to The Shining. It's like watching the the kid who has uh, the shining itself yeah. himself um we're technically watching it from his, his perspective we're introduced to the story from his perspective yeah but it's not necessarily his story right yeah and that's, a that's good point. very that's a good point. and i think that this movie is almost exactly like that mm -hmm. i think if you and i'm excited because those are the, i i really enjoy those movies that's why i was really excited to see this movie yeah. because the reviews the vague reviews that i went to uh, to read even going back to last year's Sundance, because that's what that's when this movie became started gathering noise. Like, oh, this movie's gonna be a hit one if they find a distributor. Mm -hmm. they, they did, and if you enjoy movies like The Thing, The Shining, Two Thousand One Space Odyssey, movies, I'm not gonna say say oh they're thought provoking, but they're thought provoking. No, they totally are. They, where, they ask questions. They don't always give you answers, yeah. which is very reassuring. It's looking. It's like looking at 
a painting, being it's like being at an art gallery, looking at a painting, mm -hmm. and knowing you like it, but you don't know what it necessarily means yet, but you keep going back to it because like, man, what was that? Oh, yeah. wow, that's really interesting. You have no idea. Yeah, you know you like something. You don't know what it's saying, and you don't mm -hmm. know why you like it. And that's okay. Just and that's okay. That mean, doesn't mean troubling. you're stupid. We don't understand. We don't. We sure as hell don't know what the hell it is. Uh, what, what, if there was a one singular, like, point to the movie, mm -hmm. but it's exciting to know as a moviegoer that there's movies like this, and you can say, <laughs> man, you know, going back to that, 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 man, that's mm -hmm. cool. Not everybody, you know, not everybody's Kubrick. Not everybody's like that. But when you have a movie like this, it's fun to be able to debate it. Yeah. That's why we have shows like it's this. It's super exciting. And it's it actually is performing fairly well for a film as small as it is. Hell so yeah, man. All power to the audiences that are going out to see This it. filmmaker is definitely... I don't want to see him do another, like, oh, like, oh, give him another horror movie. Because this is not technically not a horror, horror movie. Yeah. No. No, it's not. It's... I, I look forward to seeing what he does from here on out. Mm -hmm. And... Man, this guy, man, he's he's awesome. Captured like the toe, and he made he made a movie if like the village were actually good. Yeah. Like that's that's kind of how I walked away. I felt bad thinking about that the moment I walked in and the moment I walked out, but no. you can't help but like visually see some minor comparisons. Yeah. But even taking dialogue from actual diaries and stories from that folklore from that time period, yeah. it it validates just what you're what you're seeing on screen. Yeah. So it's. It's very foreign but very familiar. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else that sh I, I'm not sure if there's anything else we need to even say about it. Like, no, it just it's the way I pick. I remember going to the when I first moved to Connecticut mm -hmm. from Chicago. I, I the one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to visit Salem. And okay, I was like, yeah, man, because yeah. that's the way I pictured Salem. Oh, and Salem is not like that at he's all. He's got a hell of a story about that trip. Yeah. Too. Oh man. <laughs> and it's very it's very witch friendly. Yeah. <laughs> On the way to Salem for the first time, I was going. I'm driving. And I'm in the, the far left lane going really fast. Mm -hmm. And there's a car next to me and whatnot. So, like, if I needed to change lanes, I wouldn't be able to because right. the car's, like, right on my ass. Um, ahead of me, I see this gigantic hog. And a lot of it's, – it's big. It's, like, about this yeah, – it's this big. And it's just floating there, just, like, looking at me. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, this – I'm like, oh, I'm going to change lanes so I don't hit it. I can't change right. lanes. Uh -huh. So I'm, like, I'm going, like, 65 miles an hour. And this thing's just looking at me, and I'm trying to slow down, and I'm like, I, I'm going to hit this thing square on. Like, I hit this thing square on. You hear a boom. My mirror from the side, uh, from my rearview mirror, falls off. And I'm like, shit. I pull over so I could get my mirror or whatever, and I'm like, man, there's probably a bunch of blood on my side. There was no blood. There were no feathers. There was no dent. There was no scratch on my car. I look back. There were no feathers on the ground. There's no bird. There's no nothing. Is your mirror still gone? My mirror it was somewhere because it freaked me out. <laughs> I, I was like, all right. I'm, and I, like, for, I texted my cousin immediately. I'm like, hey, this just happened. He's like, keep going. I wonder what happens next. <laughs> I kept going. Um, but yeah, like... Um, you had your own witch moment. I, I'm fascinated by witch movies. <laughs> uh, Lords of Salem is also... If you guys are in, if you guys mm -hmm. go watch this movie, I recommend Lords of Salem. Yep. Obviously, The Thing, The Shining, 2001 Space Odyssey. But yeah, man... This is this is definitely a movie that is exciting because it gets your mind moving. Yes, yes. absolutely. Power to A twenty four. They've been making some really badass movies. Yeah, the they last got Midnight Special years. coming out too. So oh, that's gonna be so cool. excited! Yeah. So excited! Yeah. Um, so tune in to, to our social media sites because we have the the Academy Awards coming up. So yeah, we might not have a chance to do a formal review like preview kind of thing. We're gonna try. We're gonna try really hard. It's not gonna be done in studio. More than, more than likely not in studio. Sure. But if we try, if we do it, it's probably gonna be as soon as possible after it's done, if not yep. the next day. Mm -hmm. But like you said, we're gonna be live tweeting it. Um, we'll get instant reaction via there or via blog. Check that out. Absolutely. Um, also, thank you to Jackie. 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 Jackie we have Lenz. fans. She's awesome. Okay, so we'll, we'll I don't definitely know what I did. we'll yeah. post a picture of it, um, sort of like as a B roll. We'll do it. We'll fix it in post. Yeah. Um, because I didn't bring it with me. Because you it's fix too it in fragile. post. It's too important yeah. to me. Someone um, fix it. <laughs> <laughs> Sean's gonna fix it. Um, yeah. So Jackie Lynn's a super fan. <laughs> 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 super fan. Wait, did they start doing that? <laughs> Um, she drew an awesome, awesome caricature drawing awesome of the two of us, and it made us look much better looking than we are. So she even got you. the part in my hair. I was like, that's she the one did, thing that bothers did. me. I'm like, man, am I oh, balding? And I'm like, see, nah, no one know that. Oh, the no. <laughs> the best caricature is the one that accents your faults, and that, yes, that clearly, that's awesome. clearly I'm wrong about with him. Yeah. But thank you so much, Jackie. Thank you for all. Of, thank you to all of our fans. I mean, we yes. have our new Instagram. Account we have an Instagram account, yes. Picking up some traction, so um, keep doing what you're doing. So. Yeah, keep a lookout on all our social media accounts and our YouTube page. More than just podcasting going on, 
eventually, yes. but that's just a hint of what's going to come. We're shooting some narratives. Oh well. yeah, <laughs> some blood, candy blood. <laughs> yeah. It's so sticky. In but the that's studio. enough. I'll say about that. On that yeah. note, I'm JP Lee. This is Adrian Alderette, and for Exit Only Feeder, we'll see you when the credits roll.